Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lenny. Today I'm so excited to show you something new, new powerful. So I built an AI agent that can generate unlimited images for free. So whether you're a content creator, you're a marketer, or you're just someone who loves working with AI, this AI agent I built would save you a ton of time and money. In this tutorial, I want you to examine how I built it, how it works, how you can set it up yourself. No code makes ways. You dead. You don't need to enter your credit card. I'm using an open source text image and new tech tool that would help you build this AI agent yourself as well. So if you are ready to unlock unlimited creative possibilities without breaking the bank, spending a lot of time, then you would want to stick with me to the end of this video. Let's get started. But first things first, I'm going to watch you through how this workflow works and I'm also going to show you some of the outputs of this existing workflow so that you have an idea of what to expect. I'm also going to tell you the things you need, like you need some API keys so yeah let's get started with it so the first thing is i do have um, a google sheet straight that i created and really it's just an images per sheet where i just have one column which i called prompts and under that column i just have a description of the type of image i want to generate and then i do have this code in here that basically takes the last line in the spreadsheet and no worry i'm gonna drop the json file like the template to this workflow in the description box or in the comment section as well so like, you can go check it out and then i do have the edits field section which is really like extracting the information i need to pass on to my http request and in terms of the open source ai image generator i'm using a tool called stableheart.net so if you come into stableheart.net all you need to do is get your own access token and it's free to do so you don't have to enter your credit card and no limitations really you just need to come in here and then get your own access token which you could use and then once the file is generated i do a check to see if it's ready I download it and then I upload it into Google Drive. You need to have like an images folder in Google Drive and then also uh, you need to make sure that you have like API, API keys that allow access to Google Drive. So now that I have explained what the simple workflow does, let me show you exactly how I built it. The first step is to add your trigger. So for every workflow you need to have like a first step which is typically a trigger and for the trigger I'm using a Google Sheets trigger like I mentioned earlier on and I'm gonna say on Google added or updated and and then in here, I'm going to select the images spreadsheet I created. So you need to create one for yourself as well. And then I'm going to select sheets one. So sheets one is where I have the prompts. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm really not going to add anything. You could say columns to watch so that it just doesn't fully really check a map particular column. But if I had like multiple columns, then this would be a variable field to use. So I'm going to go back. First of all, I can test this. So let me test this and let's see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, we have two items that have been returned for us. If I should put this in the table form you'd see that we have two items that have been returned for us so i'm just gonna go back and because we have two items we just want to send one item at a time okay so this is where i add the code to just pick the last item in the spreadsheet and i'm gonna use this exact code and like i mentioned i'm gonna drop the template in the description box so that you can have access to the code as well and i'm gonna click on text step and as you can see we have the last prompt in the file returned for us okay so it's working well up until this point i will be going calda any issues as well the next step i'm gonna add um, a set field and the reason why i'm adding a set field is that if we come into stable horde and we come into this particular host request here you'd see that it's requesting for a few things it's asking for like your api key your payload object okay and i want to return this payload object separately so i don't want to send this um json block because i want it to be dynamic i want it to pull from what i have in my spreadsheet which is why i'm using the set node and in the set node i'm gonna have two different input fields here because if you look in here the payload is composure and in the payload we have the prompt and then we have the parameters right so what i want to do is i want to send a prompt separately and then i want to send a palm separately so in my set field i'm gonna enter a field and i'm gonna call that field prompt and then i'm gonna drag what my prompt is in here and the prompt is correctly set to a string and then i'm gonna add another input field this time around the input field will be an object and i'm gonna call the input field palm okay pounds because i just want to reflect what's in here in the api reference documentation i'm gonna put in what my parameters are and i'm gonna change this into an object and move this into an expression and i'm gonna put in my own parameters in here so if i should test this right now it should return this for me okay so now i have two items which i'm gonna be sending to my http request so i'm gonna come back into my workflow 
I'm going to click on this class button and then I'm going to select the HTTP request. And in here, what I'm just going to do is I'm really going to use a post because if you go into the documentation in here, where Legion Media Images, it tells you the post request. And then I'm going to put in the endpoint URL, which is really this one here. And then from our documentation, the API key needs to be sent as an header. So I'm going to come into send headers. And in here, I'm going to say my API key, okay? So which is this one? And then I will copy my API key in here as well. And then I'm going to add another parameter. And this time around, I'm going to put uh, the content type. Because if you come into our API reference documentation in here, the parameter content type is application JSON. So I'm going to come in here, type the name of content type in here. And then the value would be application JSON. Okay. And I'm going to also add an accept, all right, so that it's a set application JSON as well. I'm going to put it in here, copy this, and then I'm going to paste this in here. Now, I'm going to send a body, right? Because I created the content I wanted. Like I built the JSON content in the previous file, which is really what's coming out of the edit fields note. For body content type, I'm just going to say JSON. And then specified field below, I'm going to say using the JSON. And the intent of the field in here, I'm going to enter this one. So as you can see, it will be passing the objects that was created in the previous step. So we have this, this working now. And then in terms of options, I'm going to add um, batching. And I'm going to say, I just want one item per batch okay so this is fine if i should test the step right now it should generate an id for us so this is really good all right so let's go back things are working really well for us now let's move on to the next step now i'm gonna put a wait in here because it may take a while to generate let's say 30 seconds 45 seconds so i'm just gonna say let's give it 45 seconds okay so this is just a wait node to just create a bit of a delay and then my next step is where i'm actually gonna check on the speed us uh, to see if the image has really been generated from us and to do so again i'm going to be using an http request but this time around i'm going to be using a get instead of a post and this is what i'm this is from the api defense documentation i want to check the ib i'm going to be using this one here this get request here to check if the image has been generated so there are two things you can do so you could retrieve the full status which would basically include the images if you want to check the status or you can just check the status without the images so i want to check the status with the images so that i can pass on the image onto the next step so this is the command i'm gonna be using so come back into my workflow here and like i mentioned i'm gonna be using the get command and i'm gonna use this exact ull and i'm also passing the id from the previous step and and then if I come into authentication, it'll be none. And I'm again going to be sending the headers as usual. This is the API key I'm going to be using. I'm going to copy this API key paste here. And I know I'm showing my API key because I'm going to delete it outside this video. So now that we sent our API keys on the value, um, we just want to add a response. And then we want our response format to be a JSON. Okay. And that's fine. So if I should test this right now, if our image has really been generated for us, you see it come through here. Okay. So our workflow has completed and as you can see we got our image generated we have our state we have our id all of these are the things that have been passed and we can see that we have done a sql to true so this is really what we want to see okay we want to see that match true so because we have that being passed they're going to add an if else statement so if else statement and um, we are going to pull the done value in here and we are going to say that um, it should be a boolean and if it's true then it should do something okay so that is what we are passing in in the if else statement and then in here you're gonna come in here and we are gonna say that if it's true it means that if done is true then the next step is to download the image and to download the image you're gonna be using an http request and in the node all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a get and i'm gonna drag this in here and then under the options response i'm gonna say i want it to be a file and that means that it's gonna transform it into a file for us so if i should test this right now we should expect a file being generated so if i should view this you'd see that a file has been generated and, and it accurately depicts what we asked for in the prompt which is really a majestic asian castle floating among the clouds emitted by the moon um starry sky backdrop fantasy style highly detailed architecture 
magical realism so it's it's just depicted everything we wanted to have in the prompt so now that we have our image downloaded the next step is to just drop this into our google drive folder okay i suspect that if you want to use these images maybe you're using it for a project so you may have a folder created for it so i already do have a folder i created and i called the folder images so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come in here and i'm gonna add the google drive node and i'm gonna say i want to upload a file and in the name of the file i'm gonna really use on um, the name i got from the prompt in the beginning which is really this one so i'm gonna come in here and then i'm just gonna grab the prompt in here and the parents folder i just really want it to be in the images file and in the images folder i created and i'm not gonna really add any additional options i think this should be fine if as you run this right now it would work for us so let's test the entire workflow okay let's test the entire workflow so i'm gonna add a few prompts in here in my spreadsheet and then i'm gonna run the left through and then we have an idea of the image we did the workflow has been completed successfully this is the image that we got exactly what we wanted uh, it has some flying class and then let's see if it was dropped into our drive so if i should come into our google drive folder and i refresh you can see that this is generated for us in here so it's been dropped into our google drive folder so yeah um these are a number of other images that have been generated using this particular open source AI text image generator let me know what you think in the comment section below do you think it's cool try it out let me know like I mentioned I'm gonna drop the JSON template in the description box and in the comment section as well so that you can download it as well I do have other tutorials on AI agents that I have built along with their templates I'm gonna drop them in the description box below or I'm gonna leave them on the screen so that you can check them out but for now really thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one if you haven't subscribed to my channel don't forget to hit a subscribe button give it a like comment all the good stuff thank you for watching